I wanted to show a video about if you if you had the need to, how would you throw up a quick shortwave antenna? You know, even if you don't want to have a shortwave radio out and you just want to keep it somewhere in a closet, or whatever, in case of emergency. You know, how it, when the time came that you needed to pull it out and use it, how would you um, how would you have an antenna uh, put up quickly in order to do that? And so what I've done is. I've actually just used old um, uh, electric fencing materials that I have that I have sitting around. And if you have land and animals, uh, you probably have a lot of the same stuff laying around uh, that we have to do this. And I probably did this in maybe 20 minutes. It's that easy, and it's a great antenna. And I'll show you the reception that it has. So let's let's talk about materials. So here's just an old roll of uh, aluminum. Electrical fencing. This is Red Brand, uh, and uh, I, I don't know exactly what gauge it is. Uh, from what I've heard, it, the gauge doesn't matter a whole lot uh, when it comes to shortwave antennas. And then on the tree there, you can see the insulators. This is actually from an old hog fence that we had, where we were keeping them in with three strands of electrical fencing, which worked pretty well until they got big enough, and then a lot of times they would just kind of cruise right through it. But these ceramic insulators, you can get anywhere where electrical fencing is sold. They're pretty cheap. They're probably like a buck or two a piece. And you're only, you only need two. And uh, these right here are not going to come out of that tree because the tree is actually growing around them. So I used a couple of newer ones that I had laying around. And you want one that has a pretty good long screw uh, coming out of it, maybe uh, at least two inches. So these are the two main... Uh, ingredients, I guess you could say right here, is, is the insulator and the, uh, the electrical fencing wire. And I'll show you how we hooked it up uh, in the tree. So here's the uh, insulator that's actually mounted in the tree. And as you can see, it's a pretty, it's a pretty sizable one. That one's got a probably about a three inch screw on it. So it's it's uh, it's really well mounted on that tree. And just got the uh, electrical fencing there. And as you can see, that wire runs out to that window. <clears throat> runs out to that window on the far left-hand side, and you can you can tell there's a little dip in it in the wire, and that's fine because uh, you want when you're mounting to a tree, you want some dip in it because when the wind blows, it's going to tighten that wire up and it's going to snatch it right out of the weakest point, whatever that's going to be. And I've already had this one. I had too much tension on this one when I first put it up. And the first windstorm that came up <coughs> yanked my insulator out of the side of the house. So I've, I've let it have a little more slack. And it really doesn't make a lot of difference in reception that I've seen. You can see I cut a hole here <coughs> in the branches of the tree. Because you don't want anything that's going to ground that wire touching that wire. So uh, even though this branch right there is maybe two feet from that wire, at some point I'm probably going to have to cut that one back. Uh, but for now, uh, it's good. I don't have anything rubbing. And uh, the reception, like I said, is really good. So we'll go up on the part of the roof over there and I'll show you how I've got it mounted to the house and how I've got it wired in to the window. So here's the insulator that's mounted just right through the vinyl siding on the house. Uh, if you got brick, I'm sure there's a way to maybe squeeze in between a, a gap. Uh, between your window and the brick maybe to get to a stud But uh, this is a little smaller insulator than the one on the tree, but you can see here again. It's just this is the wire and Then it goes all the way out to the tree over there where we just were and uh, It's probably about hundred and twenty five feet. I think somewhere between hundred and hundred and twenty five feet Which is good for a shortwave wire Here's the feeder <coughs> wire and where I've got it taped on uh, and I actually exposed about three inches of the feeder wire the copper and I wrapped it around for a length about this far just to get a really good connection and this wire here I don't know if you can tell but it's actually just trailer wiring trailer light wiring also that I had laying around so this, this antenna cost me nothing to make because I had everything laying around even if you were to go buy everything uh, it would be extremely inexpensive to do even if you had to go buy it and what I've done is I've just run this down between the shutter and the window just to hide sorry all the connections 
and then you can see this wire here, the green one, that's my ground wire. And uh, again, same, same kind of wire, same kind of connection to the trailer wiring. And uh, that goes back down to the ground there. And uh, I actually got this kind of tucked under, again, where you can't see it. There's a real lot of reasons why <clears throat> you wouldn't want anybody seeing it. Aesthetics, of course, primarily. Uh, you don't want a bunch of uh, wires and, and things hanging around outside the house. And that also can get snagged on by animals or, or uh, storms or limbs. And also, you probably don't want to be announcing it to everybody in the world that you're prepared, you know, for anything uh, should it happen uh, for obvious reasons. And... Uh, like I said, I, you know, it's hard to predict what will happen in society, but I know that really since the Industrial Revolution, our society has been built upon this uh, continual uh, house of cards, call it technology or electronics, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this, you know, the fact that I can make a film on a phone <clears throat> is uh, at, at, you know, at 60 frames per second with 1080p is is a small marvel in itself and uh, the problem is is that uh, once that card the house of cards comes crumbling down and I think at some point it probably will uh, it's like hitting a reset button back to about 1865 and uh, we're a much different country now than we were in 1865 and uh, whereas we were able to support ourselves then uh, from a food standpoint or a system sustainability standpoint I'm afraid we're we're far and above that now so having a way to talk or listen at least listen to the outside world and know what's going on uh, at least be able to unhear what's going on because there will be I'm sure there will be transmissions going on uh, you know it may affect just us and not other parts of the world all of the other parts of the world have shortwave <clears throat> and at least being able to get you know the outside news would be an extremely important thing uh, in a situation like that. So we can go inside now and look at the interior hookups. This is where the ground wire actually comes out and and uh, you see it comes out of the bottom of the eave here. I've run it up just along the um, the, the vinyl siding up to the second floor. Uh, this tucks it out of the way, people can't see it. And then I've got it running to just a piece of rebar. Now I know you can, uh, you're supposed to use uh, copper uh, you know, a, a sturdy copper grounding rod, and those work too. And I have those several of them buried around our property that I've used over time. But their copper has become really expensive, so I found that um, rebar works just about as well. And again, this is just um, electrical fencing wire, and I do have a clamp here that's made to go around a grounding rod. And I've just wrapped the electrical fencing wire around that clamp a few times. This is actually a piece of copper pretty thick copper that I pulled over the top and that's bendable so that actually hold, holds that pretty well in place this this piece of rebar here <clears throat> I think is three foot so I've got it hammered three feet in the ground and then that's wired directly up to uh, the radio on the second floor this is the radio that I'm using this is an old uh, Yezu Musen uh, Japanese radio from the 70s it's a FRG7 and uh, this was my dad's radio one of many that he had and uh, it's a very good radio uh, it's you know it's not like it's not a digital it's an all manual it's kind of like the difference between a, a manual camera and a fully automatic camera this is the manual version but I actually prefer that and uh, you know once it's it's not a big deal to, to to figure out all the knobs and everything but if you notice right now uh, the S meter uh, there's very little there's no signal uh, it's on about 0.5 there I uh, haven't hooked up the antenna, and I'll just show the difference between um, not just, of course, having the antenna hooked up and uh, the power that even a simple antenna like this has, but also the difference that a ground makes when you hook it up. So this is prior to, uh, here's here's the, the white lead-in wire like I, sh I showed before, and so this is, this is with no uh, uh, antenna hooked to it at all. Uh, on this picture already, you, you have an option to have a, a cable input, which I have, but it's hooked to a different kind of antenna. Uh, or you can do the, uh, the hard wire leads here. So you can see this, this, this thrown together antenna that I, that I put up for, for no money uh, with just using one string of wire 
and two insulators, the difference that it makes uh, when it's hooked up. And this is during the day, and uh, if you know anything about shortwaves, you know that during the day you get uh, very little reception. It's mostly at night that the reception comes in, and this has uh, some really good uh, reception at night time, especially uh, with this antenna. So the ground wire, <coughs> which is the green one here, it actually plays a role too in the sound. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but the sound, the volume has stayed the same, but the, the it's just gone to static. You can't hear the voices uh, until you hook up the uh, the ground. I don't know if you can hear the, uh, the voice comes back into it. And that's because the ground actually completes the circuit. And the ground doesn't ground out the antenna. Uh, you know, and an antenna is just a electrical gathering device that gathers electricity out of the air. If you ground the antenna, all that electricity is going to go into the ground instead of into the radio. The ground grounds the radio, so that in the event of a of a, a electrical surge of any kind, including maybe lightning, the, uh, the electricity going into the radio <coughs> or or within the radio goes into the ground instead of damaging the circuitry. And like I said, this is this is a solid state radio. Uh, but I do have a tube one, uh, just in case uh, all the solid state electronics are out. And um, just wanted to do this uh, as a way to, to show people how quickly and inexpensively you can get access to the outside world if you needed to um, in the event of an emergency and you couldn't leave your home and most of your electronics were not working. So we have bio true selenium that sold out a little bit more came in from the mustard seed that funds our operation infowarslife.com or call toll free 50, actually 55, but 50 special mentions. There will be five main pro, uh, prizes to this contest. Un texto con las características del género vernáculo que se quiso rescatar dentro de la escena cubana. Por esa época... Thank you. 